Good morning, folks. Thanks to Tom, Tom, and Sig for the Surrey and Vancouver event last night. The top story, yet another sun-diving comet. These set off the sun time after time, and the spots that fired big time earlier in the week with the sun-diving comet are now crested onto the Earth-facing disk. These spots both appear to have firm delta-class magnetic fields, and they aren't even in prime classification position yet. Positive and negative mixing quite a bit here, and it's likely that at least one of these will fire as the comet approaches our star. Thus far, we've seen just some C flares in the wake of that M flare two days ago, low level flashing from the active regions incoming and departing. Interestingly, the proton flux refuses to settle down. Any further antagonizing, we're going to get a radiation storm. Solar wind, at least this metric, appears relatively calm. We do have some minor variability into above average range, but Earth systems are handling it just fine. No instability. We're also monitoring the southern plasma filament for an eruption, and we're back out of negative influence at this point as the positive coronal holes up north swing in, visibly dark here. Looking at the quakes, the Pacific Ridge keeps rumbling, which is unusual, but hey, as long as Chile stays below 6.6, .6, I'm happy. Iceland continues its magnitude 5 rumbles, and folks, do you remember how the storm watch sat atop southeastern Europe for three straight days? Just like that with the uptick in seismicity. Very well could be Earth spot quakes. We've got an animation from the Global Precipitation Measurement Mission. Their data is becoming a bit friendlier to access, although still not fully as accessible to most of us as with the Tropics mission. Interesting updates about the project and its coordination with other satellites can be found below. Another measurement mission is about to be the bane of Al Gore as the CO2 on Earth will be confirmed to be rising exponentially while this pause in global warming continues on and on. We've got a story on Titan interesting take on its layers and how the hydrocarbons interact with the water ice and the moon's crust recommended reading for star water enthusiasts we've also got a story about lava flows in hawaii reaching close proximity to neighborhoods usgs related data via the weather channel and last but not least dozens are dead and that number will likely rise in Kashmir, where the flooding has been fairly devastating to the area a bus with a marriage party is said to have been swept away hurricane norbert Oh, now this is getting interesting. System is already shearing off moisture to the north and affecting the southwest, but its track now appears set to actually swing up here itself. Meanwhile, the convergence line is solid in the states today. Smashing the air together and working out their differences will result in the yellow severe watch zone as it moves east tonight. The lion's share of the states affected by that or Norbert in the southwest. Pressure overlay in Europe shows we've still got lows near the seismic zone in Turkey and surrounding areas. Storm zones are again there and in the central parts of Europe on Mediterranean flows. Precipitable water overlay shows the lows straddling Australia and affecting both it and New Zealand. Fairly easy to see how the watch zones arise down under. We do have the rest of the global storm watches and shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 a.m. Local Time. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.